Want to knife your backhand slice like the pros? Hey there, Ramon Osa with you here, and if you've been watching Wimbledon, you've seen Roger Federer just absolutely knifing his backhand slice. And if you're like me, you're thinking, God, I want to be like him. Anyway, Roger can really knife his slice, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how he does it, and in turn, how you can do it too. Let's get started. All right, the slice, awesome shot to have because it's super versatile and you can use it in defense if your opponent pulls you wide and you need some time to get back into the court. You can use it offensively if your opponent hates that low ball and you can absolutely use it when you're in transition to get into the net, put the volley away and celebrate like crazy. So here's some things that you'll wanna do if you really wanna knife that slice. Number one, grip, continental all the way. Some people hit the slice with an eastern forehand grip, but I like to keep it simple. You know, you can get that knifing action with a continental grip. Bonus being, it's the same grip you'll want to use when you're up at the net if you're thinking of coming in. Now, if you notice here, Roger's going to knife his backhand slice, and if you peek at his grip, you're going to see he's between a continental and eastern forehand. You can experiment with this, but I say just go with the continental all the way. Uh, two, preparation. This one is absolutely key if you want to consistently keep your opponent scrambling for your slice and trying to pick up the low ball. Couple things going on here. Number one, knuckles to the sky on your dominant hand. And you can see Roger here modeling this. By the way, if it sounds like I have a major man crush on Roger, I totally do. I admit it. And Roger, if you're watching this, call me up. Let's do some videos together. All right, the next thing in the preparation is your non-dominant hand and if you're a righty, that's your left, it's going to be supporting the racket. Now, I like keeping my left hand around the throat, but it doesn't really matter where it is. Just make sure you're using your non-dominant hand because it helps stabilize the old racket head uh, before you knife that slice. And last thing on the preparation, and this is the most important part, you want to make sure your racket head is above the ball. More precisely, it's above the height where you're going to contact the ball. If you try and hit a slice on the same level as the ball, the ball's going to float on you. Your opponent's going to be all over it, and you're going to be scrambling around the court. You don't want that. You want him to be doing the scrambling. Okay, so you got the right grip. Your preparation looks like a pro. Now what? Well, we're going to swing, and the swing path will be different depending on if you're trying to hit that deep, hard, penetrating slice, or if you're trying to hit a short angle or even a drop shot, very similar. And the image I like is the smile mainly because tennis is fun, but also because as you'll see from the side here, the racket starts high, you swing down on the ball, and then it can come back up again, much like when you smile. Incidentally, I had a coach who uh, said the slice is like airing the armpit. Great analogy, but make sure you've showered recently if you plan on showing this to your good-looking doubles partner. It'll help them receive the message the right way, if you know what I mean. Now. As you're executing your swing, you got to remember to stay sideways. Otherwise, what happens is you over-rotate, you lose power, you pull away from the ball, accuracy goes out the window, and that's no good. You want to make sure you stay sideways through the stroke. Finish your smile, and then open up back into the court and get ready for your next shot. Now, if you watch the pros do this in real time, you'll say, Ramon, I swear they're rotating through the stroke. And I hear you, but let's look at my man Roger here knifing his slice, staying sideways through contact, and voila, then he opens up and prepares to pepper that next ball at his opponent. And you might be asking, Ramon, when do I actually make contact with the ball? And it's a great question, and I'm glad you asked, because as you know, the moment you hit the ball is the moment of truth. It's largely what determines if the ball does what you want it to do. In this case, it's if you get that knifing, biting slice that you want. And the answer is the 45 degree angle into the court. Now, if you subscribe to my channel, first off, great to see you back. You've heard me talk about this all the time. You want to make contact right here at the 45. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, I'd definitely like to have you aboard. So go ahead and click that subscribe button now. Okay, contact at the 45 degree angle. Now, the racket has got to be slightly open because we're swinging down at the ball. And if we did that with a neutral racket, it would plop right into the net. So you're probably thinking, well, how open should it be? And the answer is 
It depends. And it's something you're going to have to feel and practice with trial and error. But basically, if we're talking about a knifing, deep, penetrating slice, you'll notice the more downward motion you have on your swing, the more open your racket face can be. And we'll talk about the short angle slice in another video. So if that interests you, uh, make sure you subscribe so you get that lesson when it comes out. Again, this is something you really have to feel. The next big thing is keep your head still through contact. This one is absolutely key, and I always used to get curious when I was learning this shot, and I curiously hit a lot of balls long, wide, or into the net. It's the weirdest thing, but you want to train yourself to keep your head still through contact. There's famous pictures of Roger everywhere uh, showing his head just still and centered on contact, and let's just take a second to admire this thing. Okay, so keep your head still. Don't get curious and pop your head up. It'll actually help you be more accurate and hit a better knifing slice. And just as an aiming tip, most players I watch hit their slices too high over the net. So when you're practicing this, I recommend you actually aim for like the top tape of the net. And if you're consistently floating the ball, then even aim maybe for the middle of the net and you'll start really getting a feel for that knifing backhand slice. Thanks so much for watching this video. I had a great time making it for you as I enjoy making every video for you. And you know, I'm coming out with a brand new product called the Ultimate Backhand, which comes in one or two hands. And it's designed specifically to help you effortlessly and powerfully hit your one or two handed backhand with consistency and accuracy. It's not out yet, but if you're interested in it, go ahead and click the link somewhere in the link, uh, in the link, in the description, and you can get on the early bird list that'll give you first access to it before I release it to the rest of the general public. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.